Hello students, welcome to the answer writing program. So today we will be discussing geography from GS1 and the topic is geomorphology. So let's take an overview of all the three questions. So the very first question is related to direct and indirect evidences to understand the earth's interior structure. And the second question is related to paleomagnetism and the third question is related to earthquake waves and the shadow zones. So let's start our discussion from the very first question. First question says that we need to bring out the various direct and indirect evidences that assist in understanding the nature of Earth's interior structure. So the question's demand is about direct and indirect evidences to tell us about the Earth's interior. So this we have to cater to this demand in detail in the different body parts, in the two different headings. First is direct and second is indirect. So in introduction, you can set the background that at the very first place, why we need the information related to the Earth's interior structure. So you can start that the Earth's radius is approximately 6400 kilometer and to be precise is 6370 kilometer. So this is so huge that we cannot get down to the deep or you can say that the core or the center of the earth. So to know about the different layers of the earth's interior, to do, uh, know about the different resources, different uh, minerals, different materials, different rock structure, what are all present inside the earth's interior. So that is why we have direct evidences or the indirect evidences. One way to start your introduction is like this. Second way is like you can tell about that the structure of the earth's interior, it is the result of the various complexities that happens inside the earth's interior. And Earth's interior is the source of the origin of the different disasters like earthquake, volcanoes, uh, different other disasters like tsunamis. So for the preparation to uh, get prepared for these disasters, we should know about the origin or we should know about the Earth's interior so that our preparation is good. So this is also one way you can start your introduction. Then moving on to the main body part that there are the two primary sources of the information about the earth's interior uh, to tell us about the interior, interior composition of the earth is direct evidences or the indirect evidences. So let's start our body part with the direct sources of information. Direct sources of information one way is if we ourselves directly go deep inside the earth's means via digging, via mining, then we can get to know about the different uh, characteristics, different uh, temperature patterns, uh, pressure patterns, density of the different materials, what are the available of the, what are the availability of the different materials inside the earth's interior. One way is mining, digging directly. Second way is, this is our surface. If magma comes directly on the earth's surface, with magma, with the studies, with the analysis of the, that magma, we can get to know about the earth's interior, various uh, materials, what all things are present in the earth's interior. Second way is this. So the very first way is deep earth mining and the deep ocean drilling project. Deep earth mining. Like, like via mining, minerals are extracted from deep. You can quote some examples as well that the gold mines in South Africa are as deep as three to four kilometers. So when people are going digging inside till this three to four kilometers, they analyze the changing pattern of density, of temperature, of pressure, of the different materials, of the different uh, rocks material. Then deep ocean drilling project. One drilling project is there that reveals vast information through the analysis of the materials collected at the different depth. Example, the deepest drill in the Arctic Ocean known as Kola, this provides information about the temperature maps, like the temperature pattern. Like as we move down the inside of the earth, the temperature is increasing, the pressure is increasing. But the rate with which the temperature or the pressure can be changing can be uh, varied. Then there is a discovery of the biological activities in the rock and through this drilling project we also got to know about the Conrad discontinuity also. So one way is about digging, mining, uh, deep ocean drilling. The other way is 
studying the magne, uh, magmatic properties the properties of the magma that has come out on the surface and when it solidifies into the form of rocks then also we can uh, know about it so the information using the molten magma then example is volcanic eruption in the hawaiian island and the mid oceanic ridges it provides a valuable site about the chemical structure about the temporal evolution of earth's interior okay now moving on to the indirect sources now the direct sources were when we are directly coming into the contact of the earth's interior the material of the earth's interior indirect sources of the information is means we are not directly digging deep into the earth but through the various other materials or other incidences we are collecting the information that how could be the earth's interior first is by studying meteors because meteors when collide with earth we can easily study meteors because meteors resemble with earth so the different materials different structures are like that of earth in meteors so it also provides information through which materials the earth could be formed next is about studying of the seismic waves so the seismic waves we all know that there are two types of uh, seismic waves body waves and the surface waves in the upcoming question also we'll uh, discuss deep about the seismic waves so this body waves which are p and s waves they have the different character characteristics when they move through the different materials so if we study these p and s wave when they move inside the earth interior if we know the characteristics of p and s wave and how they are showing the different characteristics like change in velocity change in wavelength speed etc it means they can tell us about the corresponding material through which they are traveling like the velocity increases in the denser material so we can say that there is some other uh, layer has uh, encountered in the earth's interior through which now this waves are being passed so via studying these seismic waves we also get to know about the earth's interior next is about the temperature and the pressure patterns as we were digging uh, inside we saw that there are the different temperature and the pressure patterns and if there are the different temperature and the pressure patterns it means their density is also changing so via analyzing some other aspects we can conclude to some other aspect also like depending upon the temperature and pressure we can also tell us about the density okay next is about gravitational force we know that earth has a bulge at equator it means this distance is more and the poles is somewhat flattened and this distance is less as compared to this this is one this is two so the gravitational force due to radius is increasing uh, radius is high or radius is larger at equator we know that the gravitational force is less at equator if we are standing at the surface of the earth and gravitational force is higher uh, at the poles because they are somewhat flatter but this is a general pattern but if there are the gravitational anomalies on any in any area we can get to know about the information of the different materials present in the crust at that particular place because the center of mass changes then so through studying of the gravitational force we also conclude we also come to uh, some information about the interior of earth okay then coming on to the conclusion we can write about the summary that if we know about some interior of the earth we can be very well prepared for some disasters like earthquakes tsunami volcanoes different volcanic eruptions first thing is this and you can also tell about uh, you can also discuss about that you can get to know about the evolution of earth different landscapes on the earth we can get the knowledge of these particular aspects if we know about the earth's interior okay so this was the first question let's see the model answer starting with the introduction then direct sources then indirect sources and then concluding the answer okay now moving on to the second question second question says that what do you understand by paleomagnetism this is the demand one 
How does paleomagnetism supports the theory of plate tectonics? This is demand 2. Now, we need to tell that how paleomagnetism provides some evidences that leads or that acts as evidence for the plate tectonic theory. Now, what is plate tectonic theory? In a very simple or the consolidated form that the plates are constantly moving. There are the multiple slabs or multiple plates. There are many uh, micro, macro and uh, uh, large plates are there. So they are constantly moving on some molten surface that is a thinosphere. This is a plate tectonic theory. How we can conclude that plates are moving? How this paleomagnetism tells us that the plates are moving? This is the question. Okay, so in introduction, you can write about the definition of the paleomagnetism. It studies the magnetic properties of the rocks that are formed with the certain minerals. These are ferromagnetic minerals that are aligned with the Earth's magnetic field. This allows the determination of the past magnetic poles and the tectonic plate movement. Now let's understand this definition. So this is saying that this is Earth's crust, this is magma and when this flows out through the volcanic activity on the surface of Earth, this magma comes out on the surface as lava and when this cools down or solidifies you can say, it takes the form of rocks. Now what is paleomagnetism? Paleomagnetism is about that this magma contains the ferromagnetic properties, the material has the ferromagnetic properties and when this ferromagnetic material comes on the surface as lava and when it cools or solidifies into the rocks, during this solidification, this ferromagnetic material uh, substances, during the solidification into the rock, they aligned according to the magnetic poles that are present at that particular time. Now let's understand this because this is ferrous means iron. They align themselves according to the magnetic poles. So then it comes out on the surface. It also aligns in the into the direction that aligns with the earth's magnetic north pole. Okay so this also is direction is north south. So this is paleomagnetism that we are studying this rocks to know about the information of the past magnetic poles or the tectonic plate movement. So this we will studying in the body part. So this is the paleomagnetism. Okay. So starting with the body part that this how paleomagnetism supports plate tectonics theory. So this supports plate tectonics theory by revealing some phenomena like polar wandering and also solidifies the concept of seafloor spreading theory. So let's understand polar wandering. Now let's suppose this is earth and there are the different layers of rocks. Means these rocks have been come out uh, from the magma onto the surface of earth and solidifies into the rocks at the different time. Let's suppose this is 3 million years ago, this is 2.5 million years ago and this is uh, one, uh, 2 million years ago from present. So these are the latest rocks or the new rocks. Now when the scientists studied the various magnetic properties of these rocks the scientists have seen that the magnetic properties, the magnetic north pole in the lowest rock R1 is aligned in this particular direction. Next, the alignment is like this and the next alignment is this. Scientists have also studied the rock's magnetic properties at some other place also. They have seen some other trends <coughs> like this, <coughs> like this and like this. It means if we trace it like this is North Pole, this is North Pole and according to this is North Pole. If we measure from here, this is North Pole, this is North Pole and this is North Pole. It means for this North Pole has wandered like from here to here and for this North Pole has wandered to here to here. So this is polar wandering theory. So this is one major 
एस्पेक्ट ऑफ पोलर वॉन्ड्रिंग थ्योरी दैट पोल्स माइट हैव वॉन्डर्ड फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अदर नाउ विथ टाइम अदर साइंटिस्ट हैव ऑल्सो रिवील्ड दैट द रॉक्स दैट आर मेड फ्रॉम मेड एट द सेम टाइम they are also showing some magnetic properties that are not in consonance with each other it means they the rocks are showing the different magnetic properties that are being made at the one point then how can this be possible It's like this rock is 2.5 million years ago and this is also and this we are saying in a very broader perspective like for an example only but with the carbon dating we can get to know about the very precise dates precise uh, time so this is also 2.5 million but this is showing the magnetic properties like this and this is showing like this so it means the north pole may not have wandered because at the same time rocks they are showing the different magnetic properties so what could be the other inference we can attain from this particular studies now let's understand earlier we have seen that north pole has wandered now what we are seeing that one rock was formed 2.5 million years ago and the north pole is constant they have attained the property like this now after some time like 2 million years ago north pole is still over here but the rock has shifted from this to this now this is the direction they has shifted in clockwise direction from here to here now the new rock that has been formed they are getting the properties over again the north pole this is also north pole with the time again this has shifted now this is this this is this and now the new properties are again this thing in the direction of the north pole so maybe this north pole has not wandered but the land mass is rotating and with the studies of the dip angle they also get to know about the information with which particular distance they have drifted from their uh, position so this theory says that with the studies of the magnetic properties of the rocks of the different time we get to know about the information that the plates are moving they are also rotating they are also drifting from one place to another so this is polar wandering theory okay now the next theory is about the sea floor spreading theory sea floor spreading is when we uh, the scholars or the scientists have studied the mid oceanic ridges this is mid oceanic ridge and the lava or the magma is erupting out of the mid oceanic ridges and they are erupting in this particular direction again the slab or the crust near this mid oceanic ridges attain the properties of the magnetic field like this particular direction so the scientists have analyzed that there is a mid oceanic ridge and there are the proper approximately the same slabs on the both side of the mid oceanic ridge like this who have attained the properties in the same direction it means something has erupted up and they have pushed the slabs or the crust outwards and the new slab has generated out of this mid oceanic ridges it means the magma through the mid oceanic ridges has erupted they pushed the originally uh, uh, whatever the crust was there they have pushed it out and the new crust is being generated it means again with this magnetic properties the reversal the reversal of bands have shown that with time when the magnetic properties have changed this new magma has erupted and has acquired the magnetic properties of the earth's magnetic field okay so this way you can write about the uh, paleomagnetism and how it is related supporting the plate tectonics theory then finally moving on to the conclusion you can write about the summary that paleomagnetism is a powerful tool it provides the crucial evidences for the plate tectonics theory it enables understanding of the plate tectonic movement and the earth's lithospheric dynamic nature so this way you can conclude your answer moving on to the model answer starting with the basic 
instances of this paleomagnetism, what it provides and how it is helpful, then meaning of paleomagnetism, then how it supported the plate tectonics theory in the following ways. This way, then finally conclusion. Okay, then moving on to the third question. Now, the third question says that we need to discuss and differentiate the different types of earthquake waves produced on the earth. This is demand one. And what are the reason for the emergence of shadow zone? This is demand two. Okay, so we have the two demands. So earthquake waves or you can say seismic waves. So these are the waves that are produced from the earthquake. And what is earthquake? Earthquake is the release of the pent up energy from the earth's interior or the earth's crust you can say. And these waves travel through the body of the earth and also through the surface of the earth. That is why they are divided into two body waves and surface waves. Body waves are further divided into P wave and S wave and surface waves are further divided into Rayleigh waves and love waves. So P waves means the primary waves. These are the first waves that uh, are being encountered at the seismogram. Now, what is seismogram or seismograph? We install the different seismograms or the seismographs. Seismograph is from the seismogram. So, we install the different seismograms on the earth's surface and analyze or studies the different earthquake waves, their characteristics, their intensity, etc. Now, <clears throat> this is the earth's interior. This is focus or you can say hypocenter. And the perpendicular distance on the surface of earth is the epicenter of earthquake, etc. Okay. Now, moving on to the body, we need to write down about the types of the earthquake waves. First is body wave and the second is surface wave. Now, body wave is further divided into P and S wave. Now, P waves are the longitudinal waves. So, these are types of the compressional and rare faction waves like they travel like this and this. Again, compression, again, refraction, rare faction. So, this is the direction of travel or the movement of wave and this is the vibration, uh, this is in the direction. It means the uh, wave is moving like this, in this uh, direction of the wave. So, this is P wave. So, P wave, the vibration of the particle is in the direction of the movement of the wave. So, P waves travel through solid, liquid and gas, but the speed is maximum in the solid, then liquid, then gas. Next is secondary waves or the S waves or also say transverse waves and the distortional waves. So, these are transverse wave means the vibration of the particle is perpendicular to the direction of the movement of wave or the direction of the travel of the wave and S waves only passes through or moves through the solids. They do not travel from the liquid and the gases. So this is P wave, this is S wave. Then coming on to the surface waves. Surface waves are again of the two types, Rayleigh wave and love wave. Rayleigh waves are types of the rotatory motion. They go along in the direction of the wave in the rolling motion. Next is about the love waves. They are type of the transverse wave only. They also they travel on the surface of earth but they again are the vibration of the particle is perpendicular to the direction of the wave okay so this is l wave and this is r wave now emergence of the shadow zones now what are the shadow zones so first is that we record the earthquakes or the waves at the seismographs that are located at the various distances on the surface of earth from epicenter so let's suppose this is epicenter now shadow zones it means we the zones where the p or the s waves are not present then we can say that where the p waves are not present we will say that this is a shadow zone of p and this uh, where the s waves are not present we will say that this is the shadow zone of s waves okay then we have analyzed via different seismograms that the locations within the 105 degrees whatever the seismograms are located in this particular region from the epicenter they recorded p and s waves 
all uh, seismograms recorded P and S waves. It means P and S waves are moving from this particular material. Then the seismograms are analyzing that after 105 degrees till 145 degrees, 140 or 145 at the different books they are uh, writing 140 somewhere and 145 somewhere. So we can take 145 or 140 anything. Between 105 to 145 both P and S waves were not present and after 145 degree again P waves re-emerge. Primary waves <coughs> re-emerge. So what we are analyzing that after 105 S waves are not present means after 105 this is S wave shadow zone and this is P wave shadow zone because after 145 again P waves have re-emerged this was the shadow zone. Now why S wave are not detecting after 105 degrees because we have seen that S waves do not travel except solid materials. It means something inside the earth has encountered that is not solid. It means we get to know that whether it can be gas or it can be liquid. So that is why after 105 the S wave was not detective. S waves not detected. So this is the S wave shadow zone. Then after the analysis that why P waves uh, have again re-emerged after 145 degrees because the P waves are refracted from this particular area to this area. They have refracted inside and after analysis of the different wavelength, different velocities of the P wave, they have deduced that the outer core of the earth is liquid in nature. And with the various analysis, they have also deduced that the earth's interior or the inner core is solid in nature. So this is shadow zone. And you must know that the S wave shadow zone is larger than the P wave shadow zone because after 105, S wave is not present. But after 145 degree at both the sides, P waves re-emerged. So this is P wave and S wave shadow zone. Now coming on to the conclusion, we can write about the significance or the summary that the concept of the shadow zone along with the study of the earthquake waves again can tell us about the understanding of the earth structure and the seismic activities and we can be prepared for that particular thing. So this way you can write your conclusion. Then moving on to the model answer starting with the uh, de uh, definition, then different types, then body waves, love wave, uh, relay wave then emergence of the shadow zone and finally conclusion you should make this diagram to represent the shadow zone okay so this was the discussion for today thank you and have a nice day and keep writing